Hello and a very warm welcome back to the jungle. It certainly feels like one. We've had a bit of thunder earlier this morning and it's August. And the thing about August is that this is when the harvesting really actually uh, picks up. But because of all of the exciting harvesting, gaps are beginning to emerge in and around the garden. So in this video, I just want to give you some ideas on what you can do to fill in those gaps to really make sure that you're making the most uh, of the space that you have available. And just before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to a video that I saw about a couple of weeks ago by a photographer called David Trude. And he, his channel is called The Weedy Garden. And he made a video about how he makes bacteria uh, to feed his vegetable garden. Um, and it was just a wonderful video. So if you haven't seen it yet, here's around the first minute uh, so you can really enjoy it and go over uh, after you've watched this video and definitely subscribe because he's got some more awesome videos coming up soon and if you've already seen it then you can skip ahead using this timestamp. G'day, I'm standing here with bare feet and dirty hands. Usually I'm working as a photographer. You can call me a nature photographer because for the last 35 years I've been travelling around the world making images that can inspire people to get out in nature, to connect with them. But in March 2020, I was stuck at home like most people. That put us better in the works. But that ended up being a good thing because it gave me the opportunity to fulfil a dream I've had for a long time of having a garden that I could grow my own wonderful, colourful, natural, fresh, organic food. So I did. The good thing is that the photographer part of me, GoPro Start Recording, has still been using all this camera gear that I've been accumulating over the years. So now I can share the journey with you. How awesome was that? Now, when it comes to having space appearing in your raised beds. For example, I've harvested all of these onions that I've started drying off, but I'm about to bring them into the barn. You want to have a default setting with what to do with all of this uh, blank area. And that default setting is to mulch it with compost. For us gardeners, there's nothing more important than having a healthy soil, which is why this is the best default, is to mulch your empty space uh, with compost. A healthy soil consists of minerals, organic matter, and also all of the microbes, such as bacteria um, and also fungi. And the most important way uh, to promote a healthy soil is by using methods such as the no-dig method. And with the no-dig method, you want to apply light layers of mulch of compost of around two to three centimeters, so just under an inch or around an inch, whenever possible on your raised beds. And when they're clear and empty, that is a perfect time to do it. Compost can be used as a protective layer uh, for the soil and something that you don't find in nature is bare soil. So what I'm doing here is uh, I've got about half a bed that's uh, clear where we had the potatoes. And so I'm just putting some of the compost over this and I'm gonna spread it out. Now, yes, I could definitely be planting something here when there's nothing actually gonna stop me planting directly into this bed after I've covered it with uh, a nice layer of compost. But there's plenty of other gaps around the garden um, where I can grow other crops. And being in August, we're fairly limited with what we can grow. And there's only so many uh, radish, lettuce and turnips and spinach um, that I can eat. So there's nothing wrong at all with just dedicating parts of your raised beds and just putting them sleep early uh, for the winter. And what I do now is just add another 
wheelbarrow of compost over the top and then mulch it either um, with some landscape fabric if you have any or preferably with cardboard and newspaper weighted down and that means you're going to have no weeds and it's going to be ready to grow in next spring and it's going to be some beautiful soil. What I'm doing here is uh, I had a load of radish that I kind of forgot about and I've got loads of radish elsewhere. Um, it's running to seed. Now I could wait for these to form the edible seed pods, but I've got other radish dedicated for that elsewhere in the garden. So what I'm doing instead is I'm just going to clear this bed because surprise, surprise, it may sound funny, but I've got more radish to actually replace this. Because in August you have kind of a limited, as I mentioned before, a limited season in, in which to sow. And here in our climate, zone eight, we're only limited to salads and greens um, and other things such as pea shoots and radish uh, and turnips. And something that I've really got into recently is pickling. Uh, mainly pickling cucumbers, but I really want to try out uh, new recipes um, such as pickling radish and see how that goes. So what you can do is sow a cash crop um, or a giveaway crop uh, or, or an experimental crop, which I'll cover it in a bit more detail. Um, but for now, I'm just going to grow dish radish here um, purely to test pickling. And because I have a bit of space and I'm getting so many other harvests elsewhere and I've got dish radish here uh, that I can very much enjoy uh, as normal, August is a perfect time to kind of try out some new things. So I'm going to see how well pickled radish tastes. I've just glossed over what you can sow in August, but Lizarab has done a really useful video showing you a comprehensive list of what you can sow this month. And if you want to check it out, then the link is here. For me, I think one of the most enjoyable parts of growing foods is when you push against the norm and against common wisdom and try something different and when you get pleasantly surprised at something new that isn't really recommended actually turns out well for you then that's a huge sense of joy and excitement and something that I'm constantly trying to do in this garden is push against the norm and to test out different methods which is why I don't do things like crop rotation anymore um, and why I like to grow things at perhaps the wrong time of year just to see what happens and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I am sowing some broad beans not to try and overwinter and get a crop next year um, but to actually grow as a green, uh, an edible green to enjoy uh, in autumn and to see if that will work. Now it might get rust, um, I might hardly get any crop, I might get a bit of a crop uh, but ultimately I'm going in without any expectations, only out of curiosity. And so if it fails, it doesn't really matter if it fails, at least I've tested something and I know that I don't need to try it another time. But if it does work, it's something that I can then add uh, to my go-to list of things that I can do in August. So in go the broad beans, I'm going to raise them in the solar tunnel until they're around about, I don't know, seven centimetres, three inches tall. And then I'll plant them out in a spare gap and just see what happens. And I strongly encourage you guys to do the same. Even if it goes against kind of gardening wisdom, there's no harm in trying it out when it's so late in the season. And if something does work out, uh, then it's going to be so amazing. One of the things that I've tried to do this year is if I have plants and then end up not having enough space is to kind of just leave them uh, in their pot uh, and just to transplant them later on even if they're looking a little tired and see what happens and I'll show you two examples of success stories with tomatoes and courgettes uh, later on. So here's some kohlrabi and uh, these have been wanting to go in now so all I'm going to do is just transplant them and just see what happens because these plants have already grown 
and they might not make it, but they might do because these are already kind of two or three weeks established in terms of growing. Um, there's a there's a chance, especially because they are kohlrabi and not a, a longer maturing brassica, there's a chance that we could actually get some crops off these. Um, worst case scenario, we could just use their leaves, which is, you know, entirely possible, chuck it into stir fries or whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to carry on planting the kohlrabi in this block here and uh, fingers crossed that I'm going to get a crop. Here I've got four courgette plants which are planted out about a month after the main ones and these are looking really yellow uh, and tired and I could have just as easily thrown them out but I had this space um, and they've already started cropping uh, which is amazing. Um, here is a uh, striato. I grew a lot of these uh, courgettes this year so I'll just harvest it. So you can see I've given these a, a second chance and I'm getting some harvest from them, uh, which is just wonderful. There were 12 tomato plants here and these are transplanted about a month and a half after the main tomato plants in the solar tunnel, uh, which are fruiting now. And you should have seen these. These were, were tiny pot bound ones and they had turned a really weird dark green color. Um, we put them out here and now they're already beginning to crop, they've been flowering, they're looking really healthy uh, and it's just amazing to see how well nature is uh, being able to bounce back when it's been in unfortunate circumstances and then if it's given a chance you can get some crops. So there's no harm if you have some spare plants, even if they're looking sad, to put them out and just see what happens. And that's an excellent use for any spare spaces that arise in your gardens this August. Ultimately, when it comes to deciding what you want to do uh, with your spare spaces in August, there is no true right or wrong. It's a real chance to just try something different out um, and just have a bit of creative freedom uh, in deciding what you want to do with it. And for me, it's all about trying out new things um, and if I can, putting beds to sleep early just to save that time later on in autumn. So I'm just harvesting some sweet peas because these are in full abundance and flowering at the moment. And if you want some more content, don't forget to check out my Patreon. Two extra videos every single week. It's just a bit more behind the scenes about what happens in the garden here and a bit more on the philosophical side. And I look forward to seeing you again soon next week.